Tech ingredients are back with even bolder claims taking on multi-million dollar manufacturers with just a few common liquids and conductive powders. In the past, they created what they claimed was the world's highest performing thermal compound, but that was a thermal epoxy, not a thermal paste. So expectedly, it could not take on this tube. Now though, no excuses. Can this homebrew paste outperform a top tier Tim? Let's find out. Are you lagging out while gaming? Use Glasswire to see what apps are wasting your bandwidth and causing your games to lag. Get 25% off using offer code Linus at the link down below. This is what we have right here, the Tech Ingredients High Performance Thermal Paste. It even came with a nice little letter for us. We can put that away though. Now in their video, they did an incredible job of just isolating every single variable. I think that they made a test chamber that was good to 0.2 of a degree Celsius and they had surfaces that were properly prepped and clamping forces. I don't really care about any of that. I am without a doubt sure that this is the best thermal paste for their test apparatus. What their test apparatus is not <laughs> is a real world computer. Now we don't have like the proper thermal testing heater thing, but we have a 10900K, which is about as good as you can get to a thermal load. And this is not your normal 10900K. We have it on a Maximus from Asus, and we have it overclocked so much. 4.9 gigahertz all cores, 1.42 volts, voltage locked, core locked, very consistent 204 watts every single time that we hit it, awesome. <laughs> A lot of thermal pastes, you can get really conductive ones and they still kind of suck. So a good example of that, this is IC Diamond. It's an incredibly high performing thermal compound in certain situations. So when you have a water cooler, which has a much higher mounting pressure, typically it'll do well. When you have an air cooler, it doesn't always squish out enough. Now, something like NTH2, they specifically don't tell you the thermal conductivity of it on the website. And I talked to Noctua and it has a really low thermal conductivity, but they were like, it doesn't matter. It's what performs the best for an air cooler. <laughs> so let's do a squish test. <laughs> let's do a little bit of IC diamond here first. This is our non-scientific, but visually interesting squish test. <laughs> is this tube empty? Oh, there we go. Oh, balls. Oh. Sorry about your acrylic calling. Twice? <laughs> We're controlling the weight based on how much I press on it. So as you can see, this one's not spreading out a whole lot. That worked pretty well, and when I let off, it didn't stop working well. Not too bad for IC Diamond, but I think NTH2 will do better. Air drying off the alcohol. Let's see how this one spreads out. Oh yeah, that's spreading out so much more. You can even see how it's kind of going into the little pocket at the very edges, as opposed to just being a blob. And how does the tech ingredients compare? So this immediately seems slightly thicker than Nocta was, but nowhere near as thick. Oh, that's a good spread. But I don't know that it's going as far as the Noctua did. It is slowly making its way and doing the similar kind of void filling thing that the Noctua was, but not quite to the same degree. Take this result with an absolute grain of salt, but it does look like that Noctua's paste, which is famous for having good spread, spreads out better. <laughs> it is a good result. Another thing I'm curious about before we really get into our test bench is, is this stuff electrically conductive? One not too difficult way to get a really thermally conductive thing is just chuck a whole bunch of graphene in there or a whole bunch of metal in there. And then maybe it does work well until it squishes out onto your CPU and kills it. <laughs> this is again, not a scientific test. It's more of just a pass, yes, no, is it electrically conductive? Eh, like that, like that. <laughs> Okay, this is again, horribly unscientific. Resistance, zero. These probes are about as close as you can get in the thermal compound and I think you're safe. No worries about getting this stuff on your CPU. <laughs> We're doing our test today in Linus's office. So we have the thermostat right over there and we're able to keep it within about a degree, maybe two degrees somewhere in there. Either way, we know that the temperature in here is a bit of a problem. So we record it all with this fluke right here, start and end of the test. And we're going for 30 minutes for each one. So you might be able to see if the HVAC kicks in, we'll hit steady state 
and then it'll sort of bop back and forth just a tiny bit. We'll also be running each test three times with a separate application every single time. Between each test, what we'll be doing is using paper towel, wipe it off, and the Noctua alcohol wipe, wipe it off again, and then you just let it dry, and hopefully it's good. We're not using toluene. That's, yeah, that's a, we're not doing that. <laughs> If we did it like he would, I would have projectiled after half of those white claws, like. <laughs> have a nice little dot about that size. Grab your piece of crap. And by piece of crap, I mean the best air cooler on the market. We have a little. That's pretty damn good, as you would expect. For these Intel chips, it doesn't matter as much if the whole thing's covered in thermal compound, because the die is just right in the center. But on an AMD one, where the chips are kind of spread across, you want really good coverage. One thing that's kind of worth noting here is that it's not super fair to be using NTH2 and an NHD15 because this has obviously been tested with this cooler specifically to perform the best, but it's also kind of a worst case scenario for these guys because if they can't beat the tube it comes with, like, whatever. <laughs> I do really think that it will be the spread that either does it or doesn't get them for it. Because this paste is designed specifically for the roughness of this cooler. All of our cores, 4.9 gigahertz, beautiful. What do you think this one will get to? I'm guessing like close to 90, like this is a lot of power going through it. It does look like we're getting our 204 watts. It went up to 207, but under 210, over 200. Come back in 30 minutes? Yep. Cool, see you then. Well, it's been an hour and a half, and this really shows us how important doing multiple tests is. I don't know that we're gonna be able to get a proper result out of this, but we'll be able to know the ballpark. So these are our three tests. There's like a two degree change in ambient temperature, and there's a five degree change in maximum temperature achieved. I have no clue why. It might be the thermal paste application, but it was pretty damn consistent. Here are the photos. Um, we have the CPU power here. Again, really consistent. I don't have a good explanation, but we're going to run three tests of this stuff and see how all three of them stack up against this, take an average, and we'll be able to know at least if it's maybe better or worse than NTH2. Also, it's without a doubt better than a thermal pad. We already tested that and it did terribly. It was like 89 degrees instead of like 85. <laughs> it didn't spread out quite as much as their last one with the Noctua, but I think that's within margin of error for sure, just how I put it on. I'm sorry, Tech Grandpa, if this is not as scientific as you would have liked. Unfortunately, this is the real world where things are annoying. Looks like we're idling right around 30 degrees, but who cares? It's the load that we care about. So let's go. And now we wait. And we're back. Test has been running for 40 minutes and uh, our CPU package is sitting at 85 degrees. I think our Noctua was like 84. So we're right in the running there. Uh, we did go up by about half a degree in the room. So now we're gonna save this log. We're going to remove the cooler, wipe down the paste, clean it up all again, do the exact same seating method and run another bench for another 30 minutes. And then we can aggregate all of our data together. Now, if you haven't experienced thermal paste on your clothes, you're gonna love it. Never comes off. All right, so this is our final test here and it looks like 86 degrees for this one. So here are all three of our results. You can see in this blue one right here, it's very clear where the AC kicks in. It drops down and comes back up, but it's not as spread as the Noctua. Maybe it's easier to apply this one. That's the only thing that I could think, but it's hard to say given our test setup. Yeah, this is the sort of thing where we could do 20 tests, but I don't know that we're going to come up with anything different than this. So let's bring in one of the Nocta ones here. Can you tell which one it is? Oh, it's the green one. I think it's really safe to say that these two thermal pastes are equivalent. Like I cannot say that one is better or worse than the other, but I can without a doubt say that this one was made in a shed <laughs> and this one was made by a company that's been around for years and is one of the best thermal producers. So actual value, this tube right here is what, $28.95. This one's I think 24. Way more pays for $24. This is essentially a one-off. So like, I'm really impressed. Also, this is version one. This is the first time they've done this and they've matched Noctua. Damn. I have no clue how this stuff was made, but I am excited to find out. Tech Grandpa, drop a video soon, please. <laughs> 
We go there, just drop it straight to our sponsor. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you need a website, but don't have the know-how, Squarespace makes it easy. They've got a wide selection of award-winning templates and all of them are optimized for mobile. So your site will look great on any device. You can even create members only content for extra revenue using Squarespace's member areas. Grow and engage your audience with a powerful and easy to use email campaign system. And if you need help, Squarespace offers webinars, a full series of help guides, or you can even contact their customer support 24 seven via live chat and email. So don't wait, get started today and head to squarespace.com forward slash LTT to get 10% off your first purchase. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, then maybe watch the Homer call and blew up a 9900K by trying to laugh it. That was... That was a stressful day. That, yeah, that didn't look fun. No.